Freezing Florida nights with Ozzy. Great How to you meet doing, you. sir? Wonderful. Ozzy Gomez. Gomez. Yes. And you're from? Born and raised in Florida. My family is from Cuba. Born in Broward? Or... I was born in Miami. Miami. Where do you live now? I live in Davie now. I moved to Broward about uh, 15 years ago. Why did you leave Miami? Oh, change of pace. Started a family. So... Oh, really? A little bit, a uh, little bit easier going on this side. Oh blimey! Married kids and married with kids. That whole story. Yeah, yeah. Two beautiful daughters. Cool. Okay, so now you're the coolest person at the party. The party's finished, by the way. <laughs> we are the last dregs. What's that? What's that statement? Um, you always want to be the first, the last one to arrive, first one to leave. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes. Sometimes. I guess it depends on the party, huh? <laughs> it depends on the party. <laughs> so, you are an expert in this the art of smoking the art of smoking okay it's, uh, truly a passion of mine it's a passion yes it really speaks uh, volumes about the uh, our ancestors uh, my uh, like I said my family's from Cuba came here in 1962 made uh, amazing sacrifices for us to have a better life so you came across on the the freedom flights now I was born here but your parents did my parents came in 1962 We've done, a, we've done a couple of interviews with, well, actually, there's a lot of Cuban people here. Yes, so, you are in South Florida. Yeah. <laughs> lots, of, it, lots of Cuban. And it's amazing, actually, because uh, from being from England, okay. we have a very different opinion of what's actual, what the reality is in Cuba. And, you know, Che Chivaga and um, uh, Castro and stuff like that. People in England sort of worship him. And when you actually speak to a Cuban... Mm. You get the truth. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll keep it PG. Yeah. Uh, but it is amazing. How how uh, how the, that ocean separates truth? Yeah, it's pretty pretty unfortunate. Yeah. Anyway, let's go back to cigars. So, I smoked a few cigars in my life. I prefer the stubbies because it doesn't. That, that's a commitment. Sure. So, how do you cut it? Well, you, it's really a preference thing. In this case, this vitola is a torpedo, or a little bit more of a bellicoso per se. Um, and basically, what that means is a different mold of the cigar. Cigars are not naturally round, they're put into a press, and then the cigar is molded to different shape, whether it be a box press, round, etc. I've seen pictures of the like the factories of, you know, people sure. sitting there like at a school desk and it's all right. Truly rolling. an art form. So everything it has it has to be hand rolled. Uh, it does not have to be. There are machine rolled cigars. Uh, we ourselves at, at at our bar we do not carry anything. Everything that we carry is all hand rolled. Your bar? Yes, uh, I'm the proprietor of Downtown Cigar Bar here in uh, Fort Lauderdale. On Las Olas? Uh, just south of Las Olas on Andrews Avenue. Okay, give the address so everyone can... It's uh, 631 South Andrews Avenue in Fort Lauderdale. Um, it's basically our little home away from home. Uh, we're catty corner to the Broward County Courthouse. Uh, we welcome, I mean, every walk of life. We have a full liquor bar with a very fine selection of whiskeys from around the world. Jesus Christ, so you can drink and smoke? Yes, in Florida you can actually do that. A proper, <laughs> a proper cigar bar. Now this part, this brings back the whole thing of um, gentlemanhood. This brings back the idea of being a man. You know, I assume women are allowed, but I would say that the camaraderie charged. that you get <laughs> from a uh, in the cigar community is like none other. Uh, I was in the military. I've been in different capacities in law enforcement. I can tell you that the true camaraderie and the brotherhood that you get amongst cigar smokers is like no other. You can literally walk into any cigar place in the country, most likely even in the world, and the minute you walk into an establishment, you automatically have something in common with that person. <laughs> so you walk in and you say, hey, what are you smoking? You know, what do you like? Do you like something light body, medium body, full body? What do you like to pair it with? Are you a scotch drinker? Are you a rum drinker? Whiskey? Okay, so, right, let's... Cigar 101. <laughs> so, where do you start? So you typically start by the type of cigar, and okay. typically you'll have a light-bodied cigar, medium body, or full body. And so that's just like the, the hits. The strength. Okay, the strength. Okay. So no different than, let's say, a wine, or a, a, you know, if, if you turn 21 tomorrow, or whatever the case is, and you say, all right, I'm going to have my first drink, chances are, if you've never drank before, you're not going to start with a 
scotch. tequila yeah. or a very bold scotch. You'll no, no, you probably with, would because yeah. you're inexperienced yeah. and you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. <laughs> that's correct. That's very accurate. But um, to, to really enjoy it, you may start with something a little bit light body until you start to develop a, you know, what your what, sense of what your palate appreciates. Okay. And then as you start to gain a little bit of tolerance, whether it be on the um, uh, pairing it with a proper cocktail, you know, but the beauty of, of the whole thing is that there is no right or wrong. This is truly a preference thing. And it's a nice social thing and it's a nice, you know, it's a nice bonding experience. Okay, so then the different Okay, so I'm going to give you an example. Let's take this from an amateur's point of view. Sure. So I start light. Let me grab. Okay. Yeah, I would get something light body. You're going to have typically, you have three different cuts. Okay. Okay, with this one here, so we're, gonna, we're not going to smoke this, but this is a great marketing. You know, you have the yeah, ring. Yeah, so the, the paper thing isn't... Is so the, the ring, if you date back into history, some will say that the ring was created initially as a respect towards ladies who were smoking so that they didn't dirty their fingers or dirty, you know. <laughs> okay. Don't know if that's a myth or, but it was a nice story and I'm, I'm sort of butchering it. <laughs> but it's also a great way to advertise, you know, the, the name of the cigar. Yeah. Um, one of my that, personal. That, that, it's a faux pas to take it off before you start smoking. Uh, you know, again, a preference thing. And it depends on what country you're in. So for instance, um, in, in some places in South America, you know, they immediately throw that off, take it off, and you enjoy the cigar because that's truly what you're appreciating. In places, I'm instantly remembering the guy from Kill Bill. Do you remember the guy who's like smokes twenty a day and he's just no. <laughs> yeah, no, no. He must be that guy who just tears it off. Fuck it. And like everything, it's quality too. You know, sometimes you have cigars that are not of best quality and maybe a little bit more raspiness. Very similar to. If you buy, you know, a wine from a gas station versus a, a fine wine, you know. So the quality of a cigar, there is a quality of cigar. Absolutely. The aging process, the, the craftsmanship of aging the cigar. Aging process. Correct. The fermentation process. I mean, it's, it's truly an art form. So like a, like a wine? Like a wine. Very similar. Very similar. So what... So how... Right, okay. So, okay, so, so when you get, um, I don't know if you guys were rolling here tonight. No, but. not rolling. We brought, uh, we brought some cigars. Um, and again, depending on, we usually bring a nice variation for the novice smoker to the full body smoker. And So if somebody's rolling at a party, that's obviously not aged. Correct. Or if the lead's that's, been That's aged. a very good point. So the, there's three parts to a cigar. You have the filler, which you see on the inside here, which can be a blend as well. It could be a blend of different types of leaves. You have the binder, which is what holds the filler portion together. And then you have the wrapper, which is the, the one with the least blemishes. And it depends also what part of the tree, if it's from the lower or the higher prime of the tree, you're going to get different flavors. The part closest to the sun, Tree. <laughs> so it's, it's the not plant. A, better said. As a plant. Correct. Like tobacco leaf. Correct. How big is a leaf? Oh well, the leaf, depending on what stage of its of its life, but it can. I mean, I've seen leaves where, you know, they're as tall. The plant can grow as tall as six, seven, eight feet tall. So it is. It's a plant, not a tree. Correct. Okay. Correct. That was your. My apologies. That was your. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. So what right. we're gonna do today is we're gonna start you off with a nice V cut. Okay. The, so there's typically three different cuts. You're going to have a straight cut. Well, the objective of the straight cut is you're going to get the most draw from the cigar. The V cut, which I'll show you here. This is a nice deep V cut. We'll, we'll plug uh, Calibri. Excellent cutter. And you're going to notice here a nice Ooh. V cut. Okay. So with this cutter specifically, you get the best of both worlds because it's a deep cut. But the objective of a V cut is for it to spread evenly across your mouth. The, the, the thing is, I always find when I cut a cigar is I catch it, and then the leaf becomes like this soggy bit. That's that could be one of two things. It could be that you might have cut a little too much, or it could be that the cigar wasn't aged properly or preserved properly. At the end of the day, this is a bunch of leaves rolled together. So if you don't have the proper humidification and the proper temperature the leaves will dry. So the ideal temperature, you want to be below 75 degrees, ideally 72, 70, and the reason being is 
there is a such thing as a, a beetle that eats tobacco. So the proper process is that before it's shipped to the United States or wherever it's going, they put the cigars into a container and they actually freeze the container. The objective is, is that there, if, if there is a beetle or a beetle egg, which sure. is, I mean, very, very microscopic, the objective is, is for it to either die or for the egg not to hatch. And that's if it happens to be on, you know, somewhere on the leaf. But I'm, again, at, at times you won't see it to the naked eye. So what happens is if the temperature rises above 75 degrees, if there is an egg in there, it at times may hatch and start eating the tobacco. So off subject a little bit, the whole, uh, oh, we're touching on politics, the whole thing of the um, trade embargo on Cuba, how do these get out of Cuba? Well. Like everything, for every for every regulation and law that exists, there's typically a black market or a loophole around that. So um, a lot of the cigars that get here, most I would say, are counterfeit. They're not they're not <laughs> true okay. Cuban cigars. Um, the, 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 now, are they count, the, now counterfeit has many connotations. It's so it's it'll fake, be or it's, it's fake. Just it's still it's still good, but it's just pretending to be correct. Correct. Is that what you're saying counterfeit uh, is? So to give you an idea, uh, to get the perspective from, from, from our side, a cigar roller in Cuba makes the equivalent of about a dollar a day. How many cigars would you roll a day? Uh, a decent roller can roll about 200 cigars a day. So Cuba being a communist country. 200 a day? 200 a day. How many days a week does he work? Yeah. It all depends on, you know, keep in mind. It's his choice. You know, you and like we said, we'll, we'll try to stay away from politics. But in Cuba, you make nothing and you have nothing. So what's but happened with Cuba? Everything you need. Well, <laughs> in theory. No. no. Have you ever been to Cuba? <laughs> no. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll try to stay off of there. But to give you an idea as far as the business aspect of it, most of the best cigar rollers, what they call master rollers, master blenders, from Cuba, most of them, in my opinion, have left. Because you can go to a country like Nicaragua, Dominican Republic, Honduras, and kill it. And actually make $25, $30 a day. Still, to US standards, it sounds very minimal. However, cost of living is significantly less. And you're talking about the equivalent of making a dollar a day versus making $30 a day. In a place like Nicaragua, which I frequent, I uh, try to go at least once a year. You have a such thing where you can actually purchase a home. You could purchase a vehicle. You have a such thing as a concealed weapons permit. You can carry an arm. You know. So I'm about to touch on politics once again. No worries. <clears throat> that essentially is made by slave labor. Not, no. Slave labor is when you work and you're not compensated. Oh, you're saying in Cuba? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's communist. It's made this whole thing of, you know, being able to buy a 75 inch 4k tv for one and a half grand yeah <laughs> and then in the black in the black, in black but you Friday make a dollar a day yeah and yeah. so we're, we're enjoying the fruits of no we're not enjoying them we uh, the cuban cigars are illegal in the united states you cannot the embargo's in place they're, they're okay illegal. okay all right so you cannot legally you... get us cuban cigar in, in the united states correct so anything that says it's from Cuba in the United States is well now they're, they fake. they the previous administration relaxed the guidelines as far as traveling there and what you can and cannot bring back. For commercial purposes, you cannot we cannot sell anything. You can go for personal consumption and buy stuff there, but you cannot bring it here and sell it here. It's illegal. My God, so um, pretty Mon complicated. Mon the only one I know is Monte Cristo. That's not a Cuban cigar. There is a Monte Cristo, there's a Cuban Monte Cristo, and there's a Dominican Monte Cristo. Right, and that's the way I did that better. Yeah, but, <laughs> wow, okay. This, this industry is huge. It, it, it. <sighs> okay, sorry, carry on. Right, let's, let's light the damn thing. Yeah, so let's we, go with scars. To... So, usually what we want to do is, you want to do what's called, we're, gonna, we're going to, we're going to toast the foot of the cigar. The objective to this is, you want the cigar to burn nice and evenly, okay? We're going to toast the, if you notice, I want to barely touch, so a little bit indirect heat to that cigar. Okay, the objective is we don't want to necessarily char the leaf, 
We want to just get it turned on. The other objective to this is that when you go to draw from the cigar, I want you to draw, the cigar is almost going to be on its own. So when you go to draw, we're going to draw and that's pretty much on on its own. So I want you to draw less from this and more from the actual burn of the leaf. So something you'll notice is the amount of smoke that you're getting. Okay. It's a nice easy draw. This cigar unfortunately looks like it's been a little bit dry so you see the wrappers coming apart a little bit. But again that goes How back to... How quickly can that happen? That goes back to the humidification level where the cigar has been kept. Can, I mean can that happen in like in a couple of hours or... That, uh, no, a little bit longer, a few days. I mean, depending on where you're keeping it. So you can't necessarily, uh, at times people ask me this often, you know, how, how long can I keep a cigar out of a humidor? Yeah. And that depends on where you're keeping it. You know, if you're keeping it in your car, not a good idea. In Florida's climate, it's very warm. So a humidifier, it takes the, heat, the, the humidity out or it gives it so back? You, you have two. It's actually going to reduce the humidity level because reduce it's going to dry out the cigar. No, so, so what do you want? What you want is ideally you want anywhere between 68 to 72 percent humidity and below 75 degrees in temperature. Am I smoking it the right way by the way? Yes. Short, short, yeah, short, absolutely. short, sharp. Absolutely. Short, sharp, short, sharp. You know, again, there's different different etiquettes. Okay, uh, all right. So now let's start now let's talk about etiquette of holding it and Well, there's many different it. theories on it, and again, I think most important when you get too involved in that, I think you start to lose the whole objective. The objective to this is just enjoy it. <clears throat> okay, so now it's it, yeah, it, we we um, we did um, uh, and, uh, we did the show at uh, a wine bar a couple of months, a couple of weeks, a couple of months ago, and the wine bar was just casual. It was just it, and the guys were like, people take wine so damn yeah. seriously. Why can't we just have a fun? You hit it on the nail. Right. Way about it, and that's what this is, really. I want to enjoy this with you. You know what, man? I tell people every time when they come to our establishment, you know, outside of those doors, there's plenty of drama, and if that's what you like, we <laughs> recommend you go back outside of the door. But inside of the door, we like to enjoy a fine cocktail, a nice hand-rolled cigar, and great company. And it pairs well with scotch, champagne, one of my personal favorites, um, a nice fine dark spirit, whether that be an nice aged rum, bourbon, scotch. But again, going back to everything, going back to what we were originally speaking of, it all depends on what you like. Everyone's palate is different. But to me, there's nothing better than a nice finely aged uh, scotch, great cigar, hand rolled cigar, and great company. Awesome. Well, sir, thank you. Ozzy. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Right, now we can do the bit off the record bit about you. Your parents came over on the Freedom Flights. My well, parents came in 1962 because my grandfather, who was outspoken against the Castro regime, was uh, due to be assassinated. And that's pretty much how communism works. We're very fortunate. <laughs> you don't agree. Yeah. All right. So I'll give you an example. One of the things with the United States is you're born here and you are accustomed to, I have rights. I have a freedom of speech. Yeah. I can say whatever I want. I could run down the middle of the street here and say, F that guy. You know, not everyone's going to agree, but I'm not going to be arrested unless, you know, I'm arrested for disorderly or what have you. But I won't be arrested because I express a discontent with a certain political affiliation. So little things like that, you know, what true, what, what freedom is. Yeah, um, the essence of freedom. You know. And ama amazingly, Amer I, from England, um, I always believed that we had free speech. I always had this belief that we were... As free as America is, we're not. Absolutely, the way they're, they're clamping down now on anti, uh, anti, anti, anti everything. America everyone's offended. Has, yeah, everyone's. F <laughs>
what amazes us and 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 respectfully you see how you you say to us well che and castro and how we sit down and go man these guys are so misled mm. and so misinformed and it's not it's not to your fault it's it's just a matter of hollywood that i, I squarely blame them because the only way we're actually at school in history um in england we're taught about the first world war the second world war and henry the eighth boom that's it when we moved to america july the fourth came around and we're like july the fourth independence Day. independence from what and they were like from you <laughs> <laughs> hi hey how are you 